Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Misty Morning and that is it. Really good guys, really good guys. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, or as I always say, something harder. Depends on what part of the planet you're on. Today guys, today, long live the king. Today is a Nikon day. A Nikon day. We're gonna go over some, let's say financials. Some of the guys and gals out there were not too happy with me because the last Nikon video was not very flattering, but it is what it is. I just call it as I see it. I'm not a fanboy for any company. Doesn't matter what company it is. If it's something negative, I'm gonna tell you what it is and then you be the judge. I'm going to give you a little bit of insider information at the end of this video, so stay to the end. And then I'm gonna ask you some questions that hopefully we could have a discussion about in the comment area below this video. And this discussion has something to do with the D850 and what could be happening very soon. But like I said, wait until the end for that. Now, before I get into it, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out over at jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. You can get 10 tips of making tack sharp images. There's something there for everyone, no matter if you're a professional, pro-am or an amateur, you're gonna gleam some good information. Also, if you wanna get the prologue, to my new book, you can go pick that up also for free over there. So once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. Now, I wanna just do just 30 seconds of housekeeping here. And this is very, very important for the channel and hopefully for some of you guys that have been following me for the last couple of years. For some reason, YouTube is not announcing, right, the fact that new videos are coming out or if I'm live, okay? Even though you click the little bell notification button over here and you are currently being notified and you highlighted that you want all notifications, for some reason, less than 20% of you are actually getting these notifications. So you don't even know. And I've been getting a lot of messages like, I didn't even know that you were live or I didn't even know that this premiere was going on or I didn't even know, I didn't know, I didn't know. And it just is aggravating. And I don't know if it's just something going on with either the algorithm or something's broken over at YouTube or whatever, but do me a favor. If you wanna get this content from me, click the little notification button again. If you wanna get this information, like I said, click it again and see if that helps. I really don't know. But be aware that I will be putting out a video every week, no matter what, all right? Most likely two videos, sometimes three videos a week. So just keep checking back on the channel. I'm going to try to put out a video at a certain date or a certain, let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but it's very difficult for me because sometimes something really important shows up that I wanna share with you guys. And then I'll have to break the days and then it's just off. So just understand that you're gonna get at least one, two, sometimes three videos on this channel per week, no matter what. So just stop by, even if this damn thing isn't working properly. <sighs> Anyways. That's enough of the housekeeping. Let's get right into this. Now, we're looking at Nikon's Q1 fiscal year 2022 and their numbers that just came out. And I'm gonna give these to you because I think that it's very important and they're doing really well according to the numbers, but we're gonna get into it deeper. So according to the revenue as well as operating profits, Nikon sold 220,000 ILCs or interchangeable lens cameras. They've also sold 390,000 interchangeable lenses as well as 70,000 compact cameras. Now that's an increase of 80,000 when it comes to cameras, 170,000 when it comes to lenses, and 20,000 more compact cameras. That is quite good. Now Nikon does attribute this to two things, two factors. Number one, expanded sales to their mid and high end products professional and let's say pro ams. Now, basically what this means is they're selling more expensive cameras and they're selling very little of consumer grade products that they don't make that much money on. Number two, they cite general market recovery after COVID. Basically what this means is the entire imaging market is doing better than they were in 2020, rightfully so. Now, Nikon also says to expect that the digital camera market to continue to recover moving forward. Their average selling price, or what they call the ASP, 
will increase and continue to increase as they shift from the consumer grade all the way into higher, upper end models like pro and prosumer model cameras. Also making sense. Nikon imaging products themselves, the business, show a revenue, listen to this, of $457 million and an operating profit of $84 million. That is an increase of $228 million when it comes to revenue and $160 million when it comes to operating profits. Really quite good. But where it goes south a little bit and where they want to, let's say, quell this expectation, what they basically said is there are factors that are, let's say, unseen here and not to get it twisted, not to get a little bit crazy here. According to Nikon, they said that the increase in revenue is due in part, this is in quote, due in part to the weaker yen. That's number one. And secondly, what Nikon cites is that these significantly higher numbers are due to deferred partial expenses into Q2 and beyond. So that could be Q2, second quarter, third quarter, fourth, and beyond, all right? So it's not all rainbows and unicorns. And I'm glad that they are not putting a damper on, but putting a cap on expectations. This to me will have a harsh negative financial impact going forward because these numbers are very blown up like a balloon and it's going to slowly shrink back as these deferred partial expenses end up being realized. That's just simply it. End of story. That's my personal opinion, but I think it's pretty factual. You let me know what you think. Now, strangely enough, Nikon does not, in any of their financial report, state that they're experiencing some type of shortage due to a global chip shortage. Whereas we see Sony and Canon harping on this global chip shortage over and over in their financial. Nikon doesn't say anything about that, which I find very interesting. Yet, we see that Nikon is removing all of their USB-C cables, as well as their USB-C chargers out of all of their Z-Line kits. So like, for example, the Z6 Mark II or a Z7 Mark II, there's no charging anything in there, right? So now is this due to shortages or is this due to expenditure reduction? Another question for you guys. Also, just today or yesterday afternoon, I saw that Nikon is discontinuing yet another DX lens. That lens being discontinued is the Nikkor 18 to 200 f 3.5 to 5.6. Now, we've been seeing this over the last year. Nikon has been discontinuing more of their lower end glass. Now, there's still their AFS, their DX line out there. It's about six lenses. I think there's like a 40, a 35, a 18 to 140, a 70 to 300, as well as the 10 to 20. That is it. Six lenses as far as I correct me if I'm wrong. So they're still out there, but we see they're constantly discontinuing them. Once again, what they're saying is moving towards the higher end glass as well as higher end bodies. Why? Because they can make more money with them. Simply it. So as promised, I'm going to give you a little insider information and I want your thoughts about it. Now, a patron of the channel, really great guy, he sent over an email. And I want to read this email to you, and then I'm going to read another email that came right after it. And I want to know what you think. Let me go ahead and open this. I'm going to read word for word. Now, this email came to him from B&H Photo. Now, we all know who B&H Photo. I love the guys over there. They sell all of my product. They sent out an email because he was on a list to be notified about the Nikon D850 when it becomes available because we know that it's just not out there. You can't find it, right? Shortage, let's call it. So the email reads, Dear customer, thank you for your interest of the following product. Once again, it's the Nikon D850. It says you are receiving this message because you asked to be notified when this item becomes available. We regret to inform you that this item has unfortunately been discontinued. 
please check back on our website for similar or possible replacement items, so on and so forth. So when I got this email, I'm like, wow, I got to tell all of you guys about this. Well, luckily I didn't get into it right away. Another email came through, I think it was the next day or the following day to him. Now, let me read this one to you. Nikon D850 update. It says, hello, we thank you for your interest in the Nikon D850 and for signing up for us to notify you when the D850 is back in stock at B&H. Yesterday, due to a system error, we inadvertently sent you an email that wrongly stated that the camera has been discontinued. The Nikon D850 camera is not in bold discontinued. The camera is still in production and B&H expects to continue to receive shipments from Nikon. So, receiving these two pieces of email, all right, being on the list for the D850, wanting to buy a D850 and not being able to buy it forever. Um, to me, when I see this, there's two possible explanations. We see this type of thing happen all the time in the market. And I'm sure you guys are aware of many times news organizations will release information accidentally, okay, before their NDA or their non-disclosure agreement window is over. And all of a sudden we know the information. We also see that there are many online retailers that put product into their catalog and then accidentally put them live. And then we know the information about the product before it even comes out. And that's how we end up with these leaks. And then we know the specs of a camera literally days, weeks, possibly even months before the camera is said to be announced or released. So understanding that this is the case and knowing that this happens on a regular basis, my questions to you guys in the commentary, let me know your thoughts. Number one, is Nikon soon to discontinue the D850, arguably the best full frame DSLR camera ever made, in my personal opinion, right? Or number two, will Nikon release a replacement to the D850 or discontinue it altogether in hopes of moving people over to the Z series, like possibly the anticipated Z9? So what do you think about these emails? Do you think that they are almost prophetic as far as things to come in the near future when it comes to the D850 possibly being discontinued? Is that a possibility, something to happen sooner than later? Anyways, in the comment area below this video, let's have that discussion because I think that it's very important. As of right now, we see Nikon is doing well. Their numbers are up, but they put a little damper on it so that there's not this crazy enthusiasm because they know that they're not going to be able to show those numbers going into Q2, Q3, Q4 of 20, 2022 right? They're not going to be able to show those numbers because of that deferred expenditures that they have to realize. So what do you think? This is just information that I've found and then what I've distilled down. Once again, in the comment area, let's have this discussion. And when we're done talking in the comment area, head over to community.jcristina.com. That's our creative discord server where we have these discussions, let's say more formally and they stay there in archive forever, in perpetuity, as we say, right? So you can constantly go back to them, have these discussions, and then search through all of the answers. It's fantastic. Once again, community.jcristina.com. If you want to support the channel, there's a whole bunch of ways of doing it. You can go here to my tip jar, throw me a couple of bucks if you want. You can click the little join button right down there. And when you join, you become a member. You can give a dollar or two a month, and I can give you perks for doing it, that would be fantastic. Also, there's a new way. If you take a look under every video, there's a little dollar sign type of thing where you can actually throw the channel a dollar or two or whatever you can afford, and that will also help me and the channel grow. Finally, click this little bell icon if you're already subscribed. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe first and then click the bell icon. Hopefully you'll be notified when new videos come out or when I go live. Fingers crossed, no promises, but, but please click it. Head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented over the many years for you and me. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for you in another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.